Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to show you another rope mat design that you can make and this mat is very appropriate for a hot pad, but if you want to use it as a doormat, you're going to need to use a large diameter rope. All in all, this is not the largest of mats, but it serves its function. Here you can see an example of this style of a mat. It is a three-pass version, meaning that the basic knot is tripled. It has four bytes on two of the sides and five bytes on the other two sides, indeed making it rectangular. For this specific project, I used about 30 feet of rope, about a quarter inch in diameter. In this specific case, I used cotton rope, but you can choose to use hemp or any other natural rope or even artificial ropes. They all have their pros and cons, so it is really a matter of preference. Now with that said, let's tie one. After cutting my rope, the first thing that I usually do is I secure the ends. This prevents them from unraveling or fraying. The easiest way to do it is to simply tape them up. You can, on the other hand, do a whipping. A whipping is more decorative as well as very secure. To do a whipping, we pick up a piece of cordage or thread. Now, usually you will not want the thread to be of a color that sticks out too much. You will want a piece of thread that is about the same color as the piece of rope that you're using. In my case, I'm going to use red because it is a lot easier to see as well as follow. So, with our piece of thread, we're first going to make a bite. So, we fold our thread into a bite. We place the bite over the end of our rope, like this. Then, with the long end of our thread, we begin making a series of turns around the end. So, as you can see, I'm moving from the right side towards the left, making a series of turns. Now, usually, how many turns you would like to do is completely dependent on the look that you want for your ends. You don't need to overdo it, but it is nice to have a small end for your whipping. So let's say that this is enough. At this point, we have a loop here on the left, and with the cord or thread that I used to wrap around, I'm going to travel under and through this loop on the left. Like this. Then, using this right end, I'm going to pull the left end, so the working end, to about the center of my turns, so the center of my whipping. So let's say that this is about the center. Once your left end is at the middle of the whipping, I pull on both of the ends in order to tighten up the whipping. After doing this, I can trim the ends and this end is ready to be used. It's not going to break apart, unravel or fray. To tie the mat, I first need to find the middle point in my rope. Now, to do this, I usually just fold my rope in half and the top of the bite is the middle point. At this point, I'm going to spread the two ends apart, one to each side.
Now, as you can see, I have placed my two ends diagonally in order to make things a bit easier to see. Now, I'm going to pick up the right end, or this right part, and I'm going to use it to make a loop. So, something like this. A simple loop. Now, using the same end, so the right end, I'm going to travel under the left end, here, just before this turn. So like this. Now I'm going to continue with the same end, so the right end, and I'm going to travel under over through the loop. So under and over. Now using the same end, I'm going to go through these four strands. I'm going to start under, then over, under, and over. Like this. Then, using the same end, I'm going to turn back and go under, over, under, over, under. So, the same end turns back, reversing direction. Then I travel over, under, over, and under. Like this. Now, using the left end, I'm going to split these two parallel strands. I'm going to start under, then over, under, and over. So like this. Now, using the same end, so the left end, I'm going to travel under the right end. Then, I'm going to double up this other end. So, I'm just going to follow it and do what it does. So, a simple under, over, under, over, under, and over on the left side. Like this. And since I have doubled the other end, I now have two parallel strands. I'm going to split them in my final sequence. So, I take my left end, I turn back around, and do an under, then over, under, over, under, over, under. Like this. Now I place my end, so the left end, right next to the right end, like this, basically starting to double it up. This also forms the final bite here, so I traveled over under. At this point, I'm going to need to adjust the knot a little bit before I can begin doubling and tripling it up. Before we can double and triple the knot, we need to adjust it so that it already looks proper. So, we're going to need 4 bytes at the top, 4 bytes at the bottom, 5 bytes at the sides. So, I just count them out. 
One, two, three, four. So this is good. At the bottom, one, two, three, four. This is also good. Now, as long as I have five bytes on the sides, the shape is pretty much done. Now what I do is I work in some slack into the mat just to get it to shape up properly. So what I do is simply go through the mat with my slack and adjust it. The point of this step is to get a final form for the mat before we begin to double and triple it up. So I really want my mat to look nice, so I leave some slack where I need to and I pull out some slack where I don't need it. That's the best way that I can describe it. So, it looks a lot better now, I think. You really need to make sure that you have the proper distance between all of the strands. Something like this. After shaping up our mat into a nice rectangular shape, we're going to double, then triple it. To do this, we're going to use up the two ends, which have a lot of rope remaining in them. It doesn't matter with which end you start, but you pick up one of the ends, and you follow the other one. So here I entered over under into the mat, just like the other end. Then I'm going to continue over, under, over, under. So over, under, over, under. Like this. Then you will follow the rope through and through until you run out of rope in this end. So you would continue here, going parallel to this strand all the way through the mat. With the other end, we're going to do the exact same thing. So once we use up this end, we're going to start following the other end using this end. So here, we would go under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And this again starts to double up the knot. So eventually, you're going to triple up the mat, and at that point we're going to continue. After tripling, we should have both ends at the same location. So at this point, what we need to do is trim any excess, then reapply a whipping, if you're using one that is, then finish the mat by either stitching it together, lashing the strands, or splicing in the two ends into the other two strands using a side splice. So just before finishing the mat, this is what you should have. Two ends hidden under a section. So this is the bottom. And at the top, the two ends shouldn't be visible. We need to secure the two ends in order to prevent the mat from unraveling. 
Usually, as mentioned before, you can do either a side splice, you can do a lashing, or you can do a stitching. I have covered all three techniques on my channel, so feel free to look around. For this mat, I'm going to use a simple stitching technique. To do this, as you can see, I already have a needle, which I have threaded, again with a color of a thread that's fairly complementary to the color of rope that I'm using. On the other side of my thread, I'm going to tie a simple overhand knot. This is just to hold my thread while I'm running my needle through the various strands. Now to stitch, I usually just go under and through the first two of the strands at the top. So through and up. Like this. Then down through all four of my strands. So back down. Then up again. Again through all four of my strands. Like this. And we can repeat this several times. Again, going down. Then up. Now once you have done a couple of passes going through all four of the strands, we're going to finish by just making a loop at the top, like this, then running our thread through the loop. This is going to basically lock down our thread and prevent it from slipping out. And then I do this one more time. So I make a loop, then I run through the loop, tighten everything up, then run my needle through the four strands in the mat, back down, like this, and at this point you can trim the ends. And with this, your mat is not going to unravel and you have a fairly functional mat that you can use. Guys, thank you very much for joining me in this video. Thank you and see you next time.